Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. This video is the next in a series looking at the financial implications of Russia's invasion of Ukraine on the global economy. And in today's episode, I want to talk about natural gas and specifically natural gas in Germany. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that one of the problems that the EU has is Germany's reliance upon Russian gas. The EU would absolutely have loved to have introduced an outright ban on the purchase of all Russian energy as soon as the invasion of Ukraine started. However, the problem that the EU had was that a number of countries had a high dependency on those Russian gas supplies, and Germany is one of those countries. And the reasons for that high dependency are that consumers in Germany are predominantly using gas to heat their homes and for cooking. It's also used to produce electricity, and it's used by a lot of industry. And the gas has been supplied from Russia by pipelines, and that's meant that it's been really cheap and convenient. And in fact, Germany was involved in the construction of both the Nord Stream and the Nord Stream 2 pipelines that bring gas directly from Russia under the Baltic Sea into Germany. So the current problem that both Germany and the EU are trying to work out is how do they replace those Russian gas supplies? Now, the obvious answer to that is liquefied natural gas. But that's easier said than done because Germany is a large country. It does have some coastline, but the vast majority of the country is landlocked. And that means that you then have to set up a whole load of liquefied natural gas regasification plants on the coast and then feed the gas into the pipeline system. So it's going to take some time to be able to set that up. So in the interim, Germany is having to continue to buy Russian gas. And as you'll know if you follow the channel, the price of gas has gone up significantly. I'll have a look at the price charts in some detail later in this video. But suffice to say that we've seen a big increase in gas prices since the start of the war. And that's really the focus of this video. That's why I wanted to post this video. Because the regulators in Germany have actually applied a cap to the price that consumers will pay. They don't want the full movement in gas prices to be passed on. And of course, if you're the company in the middle, if you're sitting having to buy in the gas and then you've got customers that you're billing, in the normal course of events, you would just increase all your prices and make the same amount of profit. So you would have a no risk business. But if the regulator is saying you're not allowed to raise the price past a certain point, then you're going to be the middleman that takes the hit between the input price and the output price. And that's what's happening to a company called Uniper in Germany, which is the largest gas business. This isn't a state-owned entity. This is a publicly listed company, so you can buy shares. So we'll have a look at what the company looks like, what the structure is, which countries it's operating in because it has operations outside of Germany. We'll have a look at the assets and the profitability of the company. And then we'll talk about the regulator, what the changes are and what the proposed bailout deal is because Uniper is facing a complete bailout now. So we'll run through those details. We'll then have a look at a warning that's been issued by a couple of the German banks about the fact that they think that the gas crisis could be similar to what we saw from the world of finance back in 2008. They believe this is a potential to trigger a massive global recession. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary as to what I think the implications of Uniper's situation and generally the gas prices are going to be on the global economy. So before we get into all of that, if I could ask you to give me a thumbs up at some point during this video, if you're enjoying the content, and please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Don't forget, I always include chapters in these videos, so if there's a section you're not that interested in, it's really easy to skip over it. And if you'd like to support the channel, please have a look below where you'll find links to YouTube's super thanks and membership, as well as buy me a coffee and Patreon. This chart shows the movement in the European natural gas price over the last 12 months. If we start off by looking at the price prior to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, you can see that a unit of gas at that time was trading for around 74 euros. And you can see that as soon as the war started, the price of gas shot up to above 225 euros. It then came back down as the market waited to see what was going to happen. Nobody was really sure how long this war would go on for, whether it would be a very short-lived event or whether it would have longer implications. So we've seen the price fluctuate around. And during March, April and May, it did come back down and settle at around €100 Euros per unit. However, over the last month or so, we have seen the price rise dramatically as Russia started switching off supplies to countries like Poland, Bulgaria, Finland and Denmark. And the current price of around 170 euros 
represents an increase of 230% against the price that gas was trading at prior to the war. A movement of those proportions for something that is so important to everyday life. In the countries that use natural gas, it's needed in everybody's homes. It's also needed to produce electricity. And the knock-on impact of the rising cost of that electricity obviously feeds through into everything you can think about. So this is one of the reasons why a lot of countries are struggling to bring down their rate of inflation right now. Alongside the price of oil, these two factors are really pushing up the price of everything. But of course, for everyday consumers, we're not just comparing the price against what it was trading at prior to the war. If we look back at the price 12 months ago, a unit of gas was trading at around 30 euros. So today's price represents an increase of more than 500%. We've seen more than a five times increase in less than a year. And that's why we've got a crisis right now. And that's why we've got a lot of companies who are in this sector who are now in massive financial difficulty. Because as I mentioned at the start of the video, the problem with these sort of markets is that they're regulated. And the regulators will not allow the companies involved in the supply of gas to pass through a five times increase in the cost. They will have to absorb that. And of course, it's impossible for any company to be able to do that without making massive losses. And the problem that we have right now is that nobody knows when this situation is going to end. And in fact, it could get worse. If Russia decides to switch off the supply of natural gas, which it may do, it's already done it for a number of countries in Europe, and it's threatening to do it for every single country, then we would see a massive shortage. And because it's so essential to so many people, that means that demand would remain very high and prices could go significantly above 170 euros. So this crisis could get a lot worse than it is right now. Uniper is a German energy supplier that is the largest provider of gas to the German markets and is also the biggest buyer of Russian gas in Germany. The company owns significant amounts of gas infrastructure in Germany as well as operating power plants in countries all across Europe. This map shows the international generation portfolio for the company. And as you can see, as well as operating power plants that use natural gas, it also has facilities that use hydro, nuclear, hard coal, and lignite. However, Uniper's main focus is on natural gas, and over 50% of the plants that it operates use this fuel source. As you can see from the map, Uniper has operations in Germany, the UK, the Netherlands, Sweden, Hungary, and Russia. The company has issued a public statement strongly condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine and has announced that it will sell the Russian subsidiary as soon as this becomes possible. Uniper has long-term gas import contracts with Russia in place and these will continue. However, the company has confirmed that no new long-term supply contracts will be signed with Russia. Uniper has been developing a liquefied natural gas terminal and has confirmed that it will focus its alternative gas supplies on this route. So as I mentioned earlier, in a normal business, if the cost of your materials that you're buying in goes up, then you have to adjust your prices, push your prices up and charge your customers more to make sure that you maintain your profits. But the problem that Uniper has is that the regulator in Germany has decided that the price increases cannot be passed on to the consumers. They have set a cap and therefore any cost movements over and above that cap have to be absorbed by Uniper. This table shows the headline figures for Uniper's performance over the last five years. And if we focus firstly on sales, you can see that the company recorded sales of over 160 billion euros. And in terms of profitability, 2021 was an excellent year. And the company recorded a record profit of almost 1.2 billion euros. So everything was looking really great for the company at the start of 2022. However, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has obviously been a complete disaster from Uniper's point of view. The price of gas has gone through the ceiling and because of the regulator's cap, that's meant that it's wiped out all of Uniper's profits and it's now making significant losses. As a result of this, the company needs an urgent cash injection to save it and it's been reported that the German authorities are looking at a bailout of around 9 billion euros. The German government has announced that it is not planning to trigger a clause allowing gas companies to pass price increases onto consumers. As a result of this, the law is now being amended to enable the government to buy stakes in energy companies that are buckling under the cost of soaring gas imports. 
Under the new energy proposals, the government would be able to take voting or non-voting stakes in companies related to critical infrastructure. The bailout of Uniper could be similar to the model that was used to bail out the airline Lufthansa during the pandemic. The terms of that deal saw the German authorities take a 20% stake in Lufthansa and the airline was not allowed to make any takeovers of other companies until 75% of the stake had been repaid and its shareholders and managers could not benefit from taxpayers' money, meaning dividends and bonus payments were put on hold. German officials are looking to move fast on this deal, ahead of the next milestone in the market, which is July the 11th, when the Nord Stream pipeline is due to shut for planned maintenance. The concerns in the market are that Russia may take this as an opportunity to switch off the supply to Europe permanently and never reopen the pipeline. And if that happens, then Germany would be in serious difficulty because they would not be able to get the amount of gas that they need for all of their markets. And therefore, they'd have to have some form of alternative plan in place as to how they're going to generate electricity and how they're going to get heating and cooking into people's homes. Now, obviously, they do have some storage and is the summer period right now. So they would have some time to be able to sort things out. But it's very unlikely that Germany would be able to refill their gas supplies to be able to get through the winter of 2022. Concerns are rising all over the world, but particularly in Germany, that the gas crisis could have the potential to trigger a massive global financial crisis in the same way as we saw in 2008, triggered by the home loans and all of the other financial instruments that were in place at that time. The chief executive of Deutsche Bank has said that the rise in gas prices is fueling inflation and this has enormous disruptive potential and increases the risk of a global recession in 2023. Following up on this, the chief finance officer of Commerzbank has said that the risks to the economy are now just as great as during the European debt crisis in 2008. And I think these comments are really interesting because a lot of the focus during the early part of the war was on oil and oil prices. And the fact that oil went above $100 and everybody was talking about it could go to $200 or maybe $300. And we still see that in the press now. And everybody's really focused on oil. But I think gas is potentially the hidden danger here. Nobody really thought about gas at the start of the war. But now that we've started to see Russia switching off the supplies, it's become a really big issue. And countries like Germany and Italy are now very concerned that if the full switch off does take place on July the 11th, that we are going to see major problems in Europe. And that will trigger a global crisis because the whole world is now interconnected. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think it's really interesting to see what's happening on the ground. We talk big picture a lot on this channel. We talk about gas prices and oil prices and food prices, and it needs to be translated back into what does that mean for me and my family. And what we're seeing in Germany right now is that the gas prices have gone up astronomically. We've seen a five times increase over the last 12 months. Now, nobody wants to pay five times the amount that they're paying for their utility bills because you're not getting any extra value for that. So that's just really going to hurt everybody's budgets. And the regulators have stepped in and made sure that those prices don't get passed on to consumers. But somebody has to pick up the bill. Somebody has to pay for that increased cost. Russia's receiving all the revenue. Somebody has to pay it. And in this situation, it's Uniper. So they're the main buyer of gas for the German markets. They're buying it all in wholesale and then they're providing it to all of the consumers and to industry and they're creating electricity from it. And they're not being allowed to pass on that price increase. So Uniper is now seeing all of its cash reserves dwindle and it's making massive losses. But ultimately, somebody needs to pay for that. So Uniper won't be left out to dry because the German authorities need Uniper to keep supplying all the gas to everybody. Otherwise, the crisis will be even worse. So the government's now stepping in and bailing out the company. And that basically means they're giving them 9 billion euros to cover the costs of what's happened so far. But as we've discussed before, we're not at the end of this crisis. We are in the middle. Maybe we're at the start of it. We don't really know how long it's going to go on for. It really is dependent on how long the war goes on for and then what happens with regards to the sanctions and whether or not countries like Germany can actually replace their existing gas supplies with LNG. It's going to take quite a long time and it's going to take quite a lot of money. So this isn't something that's going away overnight. So this bailout could well be the first of a number of bailouts that Uniper needs. And we may even see the whole company 
being nationalized. It could become state owned because somebody needs to keep paying those bills. If they're losing 30 million euros per day, somebody's going to have to fund that and it's going to be the government. But ultimately, the government needs to get that money back because German government will be going more into debt and then they'll need to increase taxes at some point in the future. So the bottom line on all of this is that the consumers will end up paying for this. In the short term, Uniper's paying for it, then the government is paying for it, but ultimately the consumers will have to pay it back. So that will be fed through in increased bills at some point. It might be staggered over the next few years. So there might be 100 euros added on each year to the size of the bills. But ultimately, Unipol needs to reclaim that money. And if they don't, then the government will just have to get it back through taxes and other methods. But I wanted to show you this example today because Uniper is a listed company. You can buy shares in the company and you may well have bought some shares in it last year thinking what a great investment because what can go wrong with gas supplies? They just buy in the gas, add on some profit and it's guaranteed to be a profitable enterprise. And of course, what we've seen here is an unusual set of circumstances that have turned that business from highly cash generative into massively loss making in a short space of time. And the share price has crashed. So this is a very popular investment in Germany. A lot of people's pensions will be invested into Uniper. So they'll have seen a huge fall in the value of those shares recently. And going forward, this is going to limit Uniper's investment potential. They've been investing hundreds of millions of euros every single year into new facilities, into upgraded facilities. You saw the map earlier. They've got lots of operations in lots of different countries. They're going to have to contract all of that. They're now in a state of emergency in Unipa. So none of this is good news because it's contracting that investment horizon. That means there'll be less money moving around. There'll be less jobs created. And so it all is building towards that global recession that we've talked about. So I wanted to go through the details on this because it's a real life example of how the increase in gas prices is actually affecting companies and individuals and people and all of us. And unfortunately, we can't get away from it. We are all going to have to pay more for our energy and everything else for the next 12 to 18 to 24 months or even longer. Nobody really knows how long this is going to affect the global economy. It could be a permanent increase in the cost of everything. So hopefully you found today's video useful, informative and educational. If you've liked what I've said today, then please give me that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already.